Hi everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Fight Chat Friday where we are going to be discussing what are those characteristics, qualities, traits that go into making the very, very best ITF competition fighter. So this is the Build Your Own Frankenstein episode. So if you've ever uh, thought about making the very, very best fighter from the best attributes of all the best fighters, yeah, we have too. And this is our effort at that for you. everybody welcome back to this episode so this is episode 97 and we're also going to cover this in episode 98 so this is going to be a two-parter so first in this episode we're going to have a look at the mental and physical characteristics so we're going to go through a couple of things that we think are quite important so we have character resilience preparation and longevity on the mental side and on the physical we're looking at toughness your engine or your capacity to, to perform at a, a output flexibility and explosiveness so we're going to cover that in episode one and then in the next episode we're going to look at technical and tactical so more into the actual nitty-gritty of sparring and the skills that are involved there so the whole idea of this is we're going to get some fighters that we think okay this person is quite elite at this particular thing and build an elite fighter if we could put all those guys together and girls of course and uh, have the ultimate itf sparring competitor yeah, definitely. And I mean, you know, this is uh, this does link back to an earlier episode we did when we were talking about, you know, what were the top 10 skills that you look for in an ITF fighter? And we kind of picked out some people who exhibited those attributes. And we were talking a little bit about why we like those things. But, you know, when we decided we'd break this down into uh, technical, tactical, mental and physical, there are obviously other ways that we could do this. Um, let's have a quick look at why we picked these ones so I would say if i kick off here on the mental side of it character for me is uh, it's a tough one to quantify you know but you know it when you see it it's the person who is always up for it they're always game they always bring the fight they have um you know that that go and that fire within them that you're looking for in a competitor maybe that's the way the best way i could put it is just they're they're a, they're a competitor um resilience we came across the last time as being very very important that uh we're looking for the ability to keep going when the going gets tough both mentally and physically but we're really looking at mental resilience in this one preparation so are you willing to do the homework and arrive to the match prepared for your opponents and with a plan in place and then longevity i kind of consider to be a bit of a mental quality as well you know so if you're going to learn from your experience if you're going to um benefit from doing it again and again and again you have to be able to get yourself up for the the whole process of getting into the action again and again because these campaigns one after another after another it's tough going and it's more mentally draining than it is physically draining to kind of set yourself on that path again and again. So those people who've managed to have longevity in the sport, I think are a special and rare breed as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, I know you guys are going to be watching this as well and some certain people will jump to mind. So if you have your own little ideas of who ticks each box, definitely get involved in the comments there and let us know who your favorites are. Um, on the physical side, we're looking at toughness. So just somebody who's physically tough at the end of the day it's a combat sport so we need somebody who's quite physically tough we're looking at the engine of course because you need to be able to go through multiple rounds and to sustain that as well is quite important and then of course we're looking at a kicking sport here so we need good solid flexibility and kicking ability and of course those who are quite explosive and have good speed behind them tend to do pretty well especially considering that we are a light contact sport semi-contact sport so uh, you need to have that speed and agility and explosiveness in there as well. So we've probably strung people out enough without getting into any of the action. So maybe we'll just kick off with one of those mental characteristics. And the characteristic that I want to talk about first off is character. And for me, that's really well exhibited by this one guy. Uh, shout out to Patrick Karlstrom. And, uh, you know, this is a guy who'll fight, you know, anyone, anywhere and have a go and bring the fight. And, you know... It just makes him very entertaining to watch always uh you know a little bit of a showman sometimes very entertaining to watch and i mean you stand him up against guys who are two and three weight classes above and he'll still bring the same shots he doesn't approach them differently because they're bigger uh he still wants to fight with them so you know for me a great character in the game 
Yeah, he's well able to put his foot on your face as well, as we can <laughs> see here in a few clips. Uh, so, yeah, he's, he's been around the block for a long time and certainly a character in uh, both bo bo th meanings of the word, I guess. He's a, he's a character in terms of... Uh, He's a good guy to have around and as well he's a he has good character to be able to be involved and to push the pace and get stuck in let's say yeah and again you know it's not one of these guys you'll find whinging to the referees uh you know uh, maybe maybe a little bit in terms of uh uh how did you not score that uh but you know there's uh what what i think you see tournament after tournament after tournament from someone like patrick is he will absolutely bring his game uh, he will try to improve. He will. He'll, uh, if he loses, he'll take that and he'll go back and try and improve things and go again. If he wins, he'll celebrate and he'll come back the next time and try to do the same thing. And I think that's just you know really is what we're looking for uh, in our ITF out of a competitor like that. Yeah, very good. Nice pick. Yeah. So just so people are aware as well, Adrian selected the mental side for this episode, and I'm going to look at the physical and uh, we'll chop and change as well for episode two. For sure. So you want to talk about a tough guy? Yeah, so who who tougher than Thomas Barada? So obviously the machine is his nickname for a reason. Um, it's super, super tough. And, that, and you can we had an interview with um, Thomas Barada last year as well. And you can tell from just his mindset as well that he's a tough, tough guy mentally and physically. And then his training backs that up. So he always wanted to be in there getting tough, tough training in. And he showed that in the mats. So you can see some of the highlights there. He's quite physically tough. He gets stuck in. Not afraid to take a slap and give a slap. Um, and yeah, of course, definitely one of the people that you comes to mind when you're looking at somebody who's physically tough. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, for some of the, you know, the, the big names in our sport, of course, they have several of these characteristics. So, you know, don't don't uh, let it fool you that we're saying, oh, well, he doesn't have character, he, you know, he, he doesn't have an engine, you know, it certainly does, but we're just highlighting somebody where, where appropriate. So then the next one I want to look at is resilience. And this again, talking about that mental willingness to, to go to the well again and again and to, to make an effort. And I've kind of picked out Sarah Lahan uh, from Ireland here. And you get a little bit of the, the physical resilience uh, of an impression of that from, from watching it. But uh, this is a girl that I think, you know, is just always in battles. Um, you know, there's very, very few easy wins. And so I often see her as she goes through the rounds and she's had to fight and get to, you know, the extra round and the overtime and the, the bonus point and everything um, again and again to make it through the rounds and for the tournaments that she's won. Um, she never has what you'd call an easy route to the final. And I think her, her style of yeah. swearing kind of suggests that. And so for me, the mental resilience that it takes to know that you'll probably have to go and battle again and again and again there's no there's no easy first round draw um but to consistently do it as well she has nice i think uh, example of that resilience and, and even from campaign to campaign as well she's had some tough losses and some tough yeah tough ways to, to bow out let's say with some disqualifications and things like that and to come back time and time again it just shows the, the mental resilience because that can't be easy absolutely 100 percent so then we move on to another one of your picks and we're talking about that engine that just get you through the rounds engine yeah so we're looking at Giles brown here from scotland so you can see even in this clip he's a gore um and we we had a chat with Giles before as well and he he spoke about um how he links in that physical preparation to be able to go and drive that engine forward and how he links that into his uh, his mental confidence as well so mm. they very much go hand in hand um, but this is a guy that is very, very well capable of getting through the rounds and pushing the pace to the last minute. Uh, he's always going, never stopping, and he's shown that time and time again. So somebody definitely with a great engine, and uh, he definitely kind of like very um, tries to put his game on you then as well because of yeah. that. So he tries to just grind you down and try to just push the pace and, and make sure that you have a tough fight every single time you come against him. That's it. Eventually, you know, the, no matter how finesse you are, no matter how well prepared you are, if you don't have the capacity to go those full four minutes at the intensity your opponent is willing to bring, you'll break down and it's not going to work. So then I had a look at preparation and one guy that, you know, consistently time and again, I've been impressed with the action plan that he's had for his opponents. Uh, and in particular, in those later rounds is uh, our good friend Alamine. And 
you know, you see him vary up his style. So he always stays within his style, but he emphasizes different parts of it depending on which opponent it is. And, uh, you know, I think his preparation, you know, prior to the event, knowing what his plan is going to be for each opponent um, and adjusting and being a legs fighter, a hands fighter, a distance fighter, fighting on the edge of the ring, fighting from the middle, pushing out, depending on who his opponent is going to be, I think is very impressive. Yeah, I think this one, like you can see from the last years in particular, the senior people who are winning tend to be people who are living the, the Taekwondo lifestyle, let's say, and everything in their life revolves around their training. Mm. Um, and that's how serious is getting in competition level right now. And Alamine, of course, is somebody who is uh, very much focused on everything focused towards his competition and his training. So uh, it shows on the mats for sure. Absolutely. Um, I think we went to flexibility next. So do you yeah, want to explain so, your choice here? Yeah, this is somebody who um, not everybody might know, but this is Vasil Wojcik from Ukraine. And this guy had an incredible set of legs. He's able to whip shots from anywhere. So here he is, obviously, without the helmet. This is in 2007. Um, but Vasil had incredible range on his legs and was able to, here he is against Julio Carlos. Um, and he was able to pull shots from everywhere, all kind of shots. And if I was able to pick from from a bunch of people whose legs i want in itf i would <laughs> definitely be picking him because he's able to pull all the shots from anywhere with his legs um incredible guy to watch a bit of a shame that he didn't stick around a little bit longer i would have loved to see him at the senior yeah. level and try push on yeah but uh, again really nice demonstration there of the the power of having a very flexible uh range of shots available to you so yeah there there are definitely some other examples that you know in every generation we can look to but a nice pick there um, speaking of every generation, my pick for longevity is our man Hong, who, you know, very, very long career, plenty of opportunity to adapt over that career, um, but still always bringing it, you know, time after again. And, and for me, the quality here, the mental quality here is about, you know, finding the hunger and the drive within yourself time and again that you can find a new goal that's meaningful for you year after year to incur the expense, the time off, the travel and everything else that goes with it, you know, is it's a rare quality. And, you know, there's no, you don't want your greatest ever fighter to turn up in one tournament. You want to see them, you know, and you want to follow them for a, a period of time. So for me, that's where the longevity comes in, you know? Yeah, I think he did 10 euros and 10 worlds. Is that right? That's it, yeah. Yeah, so like that just speaks for itself. Um, even to be able to, to go campaign after campaign and train for that, just the mental fortitude that's required for that is very tough because we all know anybody who's competed internationally, it's not easy to, to sacrifice a lot of things um, to prepare for these competitions. So even that alone, it just shows that, it, that the mental strength that is involved in that. Yeah, definitely a great pick there for um, longevity. They take it out of you. And then we finish with yours and we talk about that explosiveness, so the opposite of longevity. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, we're talking about that explosive ability to finish. Yeah, who better than Julio Carlos? Um, this guy is incredibly explosive, not only in terms of his footwork and his movement, but the, in his shots as well. Uh, very hard to to, see, to pull any shot off him because, first of all, he's hard to catch. And second of all, he's able to whip a shot from anywhere. Super agile, super explosive, very, very quick. Um, and I think this one just speaks for itself that everybody would agree he's quite explosive. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, and has been for a particular period of time like he's he's again another guy he's not a young spring chicken on the block you know he's, he's been around for a while and performing at that high level for you know for the entire time um but as you said it's the uh, uh that's certainly one of the defining characteristics of our our man julio definitely and he puts in a lot of training as well physically so it definitely have to have him involved in the physical side of this uh ultimate ITF fighter that we're trying to build. So let's see what this fighter looks like so far. We have our mental and physical side of things complete here. Um, so we're taking a little bit of a mix here with uh, Patrick Karlstrom uh, adding some character to it. We have some toughness coming from Thomas Barada, the engine being provided by Gilles Brown, uh, some resilience from uh, mental resilience from Sarah Lahan, uh, the pre match preparation from Alamine. Uh, flexibility of Vasil Wojcic, some longevity provided by Hong Louis, and the explosiveness provided by Julio Carlos. This is shaping up to be 
a pretty decent fighter all in all i think yeah like so far before we even look at technical and tactical i'd be very confident bring this person into the ring that's it um, it'd be so, fun yeah a little bit of a little bit of fun and we have another one lined up for you in next week's episode as well Excellent. so definitely check that out and let us know what you think because i'm sure there's probably people that we've left out and not thought of so definitely get involved in the comments and share your thoughts on this subject as well just a little bit of fun so richie what have we got for our members today yeah so we're going to look at um some clips from training that we did in the ita summer camp so we had our irish taekwondo association summer camp this weekend myself and adrian were coaching at that and did a couple of sessions together so we're going to show the members what we did why we did it and how you guys can uh, ramp up your training to work on certain topics and these topics we've covered in rice recent fight chat friday episodes as well so yeah. they're going to be quite useful and it's a very big part of modern itf sparring from what we've seen in all the clips that we've been studying and highlighting so we're nearly hitting episode 100 so we've had a look at a lot of clips at this stage so um this is something that is very important from what we've seen excellent all right folks that would be us for this friday uh, as always thoughts comments uh down below and it is up on social media if you have a topic you'd like us to get into other than that we'll see you next friday catch you next one